Morning y'all. One more day left in Germany. Busy day today starts with a meeting, then going on to film at a golf course. Not the normal filming trip, so we're not playing the golf course. I'm actually filming a series which will come out. You'll see it. Now hopefully next month you'll see it. So today's vlog, we're going to talk about the five, my five top tips for getting off the tee, trying to control your tee shots. That is a purple car. That is very fly. Right, tip number one, Matthew. Yep. It's very windy today. It is. Um, have a plan. Always got to have a plan. Even if you don't follow it, you've got to, as in because you can't execute it, you've got to have a plan going in. You'll be amazed how many golfers you play with that they hit a shot and you say, cool, you know, why have you hit it over there? And, oh, I didn't think I could do that. I mean, and obviously, I didn't think I could reach the bunker. I didn't think I could reach the water. When you watch our vlogs, we have a bit of that because we're not researching the courses and we're just playing for fun. But when I was competing and playing, I needed to know where the trouble was, if I could reach it, if I had the right club. There were so many pre-decisions prior to hitting. See the same issues, Matt? Yeah, totally. When I used to do quite a few playing lessons and, and it was so obvious when you're doing playing lessons, they didn't know their carry distances. They didn't know how far over that trouble was. So they're all just like completely screwed as before they've even hit it, basically. Yeah, it's pot luck, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, totally, yeah. Roll that dice. Yeah, and I think lots of people are scared to have a plan because they're scared that they can't execute yeah but you must know if you can i know i can carry that bunker on the right so then that allows me to make the decision if i want to do it or not and i've toe pulled it so i've not executed what i want and i might reach the bunker on the second on the on the left no you're good good enough bad one not to reach yeah but I knew on that line, if I struck that, I would reach that bunker possibly, but I also know with the length of the hole that I can probably get on the green from that bunker, so I'm prepared to take those things on. That's, that's having a plan. Yep. You won't always execute it, but you've got to have them. So many amateurs don't. Have a blooming plan. Tip number two, coach. Tip two. Use the teeing ground. Left and right. Dog legs. So let's pretend you're drawing the ball. Yep. This the wind is howling off the right here today. Yep. I am going to get way over here because those trees are annoying me. Same. And then if I was going to hit a cut today, I would happily stand over here and kind of use this side of the tee, use those trees to kind of influence my starting direction. I also use the tee and ground to a little degree. I'll try and find the flattest spot yeah I do that but I would also use a bit of slope in the tee if I was going to shape it oh nice so what I mean is if you can get a spot where it is slightly ball above your feet you want and to I draw. was trying to draw it anyway I'll just go with it yeah yeah I also use downhill lie as well so if I would tee this ball up here it feels fine but if I was to come back here there's a little bit of a bump just here that makes that feel like more downhill yeah so that makes me feel like if I wanted to hit this one, I could hit my low, safe cut. Yeah. And I would use the tee and ground that way. I haven't thought about it in that way before. I mean, that's very subtle. Yeah, yeah. I would generally go to the flat, but yeah. there has been situations where I think, because it goes both sides, yeah. oh, this bloody tee, it's like a bit above my feet and I don't want to draw this yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the flip side to that, it's worked with me. Yeah. Generally, I'll go to the flat. So for this instance, I'm going to try and hit a straight drive so I'm happy to go in the middle. I'm not seeing the trees on the right, particularly because I'm not shaping it. Yeah. But I absolutely would move around. And I'm not afraid to go here as well. Yeah. Because your ball has to be inside of the teeing ground. You, you don't. do, yeah. Go on then. Shall I, man? Go on. Wind off the right. It's a good looking hole, isn't it? It is. Lovely hole. Oh, I've nailed that. <laughs> oh, bra. What a player. I broke my teeth. Oh, no.
Understand your carries. Masses. What well, I got massive carries. <laughs> you want a par three T, and this applies to a drive or an iron. So I know I, the front of this screen is 145 yards, pins 152. So I know my eight iron is a 145 carry, but this is downwind. So my eight iron ranges from 155 kind of back to 140 almost, subject to what I want to do with it, top end to little ones, averaging around 148, 145, those kind of yardages. Yeah. So I'm working that into every decision I make from the teeing ground, and it would be exactly the same if I was in my driver or my three wood or my hybrid. Yeah. I know in my head what they carry, which is about going and get gap testings, and that allows me to make better plans, it allows me to have a better plan of attack even if I can execute or not. Watch this execution, Matthew. <laughs> that is beautiful. Oh, that is lovely. That has carried on to the front and just released all. Up to the pin. I understand it carries. It's the funny, amount of like people when... that give you their yardage and it includes, I don't know what. Yeah. <laughs> like... How far do you seven? Oh, 150. Yeah. Oh, all right, okay. <laughs> Say 125 here. Yeah. Oh, right. Uh, Classic. Oh, not warmed up. Yeah, oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> Classic hole, Stover, 16th where I played as a kid. Yeah. It was like 180 something yards. I would hit a four iron because I wanted to land it on the green. Yeah. Like my dad could hit a six and I was hitting it further than him. Yeah. And he could not sometimes get that in his head and other people because they're landing on the burnt surrounds yeah. and bounding on, on and on rolling on. over the back and thinking yeah. they've yeah. hit that too far. You've got to understand how far you hit it in the air and then work everything else out around that. Carry on, man. <laughs> well, they're just big, aren't they, they trees? Are, yeah, they are. And how they don't blow down. It's, yeah, it's impressive with wind like today. Like it's blowing me over a bit. Like, yeah, they just stay there, don't they? Do you think they ever want to just like move though? Like, what, to a less windy spot? No, not due to wind. Like this fella here, does he not just think, I wonder what it's like over there? Yeah. Like he is stuck there for wonder, 100 years. I, I wonder if you get the jealous type where they do. <laughs> the jealous type. Oh, I wish I was over there, it's more sunny. <laughs> that should be like a, um, what would you call it? A species of tree? The jealous type. The jealous type. Just tree. keeps leaning over to the sunny side. <laughs> <laughs> know when to attack, Matthew. This is a par five, so I'm guessing you're attacking. Well, there's a few numbers here, look. Yes. Par five. Yeah. Attack. 516, attack, because I can get there in two. And it's the 14th. You flip this to the first, you take that four away. Yeah, <laughs> you're now 11. <laughs> but if you take that four away, yeah. am I attacking or not? Mm. Because I know you and Ray are just gonna do out of bounds left. Look at yeah. it. I personally would carry on and hit the same shot because again, as I say, this is my strength. This is, I, this, I'm, I'm happy that I can hit this. Yeah. But there's an attack and attack for me I wouldn't do 10 finger step through if this was the first. Yeah. But if this was dormy and I needed to get there, you know what I'm saying? I hear ya. I might go wide, 10 fingers, and oh my word. <laughs> Look at that. That's still in the air. That's still in the air. <laughs> oh yeah, that's a great shot. I am attacked, Matthew. <laughs> <laughs> That's past the bug. That's I know, massive. I nailed that. I nailed that. <laughs> but you know what I'm like. First tee, yeah. I'm doing my non move swing, aren't I? Pat, pat. Have you even hit that? <laughs> <laughs> so, knowing when to attack or not is, a cr is just critical, and amateurs don't attack often. No. They're so safe. anxious that they're going to get it wrong that they just they don't ever do the attack bit. Yeah. Good players attack and come back. You know, there's strategy. They're going for it and not. They're trying to make things happen. And I love to see amateurs do that more. Apart from Rory, don't <laughs> don't attack Rory. <laughs> Go-to shot, Matthew. Go-to. Biggest tip of all. To tee balls. 
I mean, I feel like I've got to go to shot because it's a club I like. Yeah, yeah. So I, my go-to shot is just to hit it. I, I, unless I'm struggling, I, I'm just going to stand there and hit it. Yeah. Which I've always been able to do in golf, and I love. I, so I re that's one of the things that makes me really enjoy it. But for someone like yourself, I know you fight with go-to shots, don't you? Well, I have a favoured one. But it has changed, is it not or not? Well, it's always been a fade. Okay. But when I'm thinking about my swing and my patterns and if I'm playing a lot or not, then yeah, it might be a draw depending on the day. And stuff. Yeah, so, so it moves. Yeah, I work it out with what's happened before, basically. I think you just got so, text then, bro. I think it's mum. <laughs> <laughs> she's always worried she's, about she's me She's saying, I'm away. Matt, your go-to shot's the fade. Yeah, <laughs> top. <laughs> You got one go. What you got to hit target? It's target like, being the range. A bit, I'll hit a fade then. <laughs> there it is. Lovely. But I also, what I like about our vlogs, and I think lots of people miss the point, which is why I then make more videos like this, is that if you watch carefully enough, you will see us trying to even find go-to shots yeah, yeah. but the biggest difference i think and we said it in the last italy vlogs it's like rory forgets to doesn't he as yeah. the amateur and he used to have a go-to shot that little stinger thing that he had and then sometimes it just disappears it's yeah. like that and that's such an amateur mistake where you'll see us hitting shots and reacting to the bad shot and obviously we can't always control it yeah but we're going to try and find a go-to shot and sometimes you have to think a bit outside of the box compared to what you've kind of practiced and felt those kind of ideas haven't you yeah yeah now last time we played and they've not watched this video yet but i was really changing my aim yeah to try and just hit fairway because i knew i had to stay in play to make sure that i was in the hole because we had a chance of winning yeah go to shot get on the range even if it's a shot you don't like a big cut or whatever you've got to have a go to This is the hotel we have a room at, Matt. Maybe. We definitely have a room. Our bags there. are in there somewhere. <laughs> and your pants. <laughs> Ooh, have I got a room here? You have a room here? Yeah, two, two, three. Okay. Am I still checked in? My stuff is still here. Three. So. Crossfield Mark. Yes, you are currently on do out of my room. We haven't touched your stuff or anything. Because we need to, they've got it wrong. We're here tonight. Yeah. We fly tomorrow. Oh, okay. So, and Matt needs his room as well. Okay, two, two, three. They've not touched your boxes. Thank <laughs> God. It's been fun, Bernard. It has been fun. Isn't it? Video's coming soon. Nice to meet you. Mr. Langer. Thanks. It was a treat. No, that, it's just time. one more. You're not coming oh, out no. here. <laughs> 12 o'clock. 12 o'clock. See ya. This is still my room. Travel home tomorrow. See you all tomorrow. We'll try and get something posted tomorrow, but it's going to be a busy travel day. I'm going to bed in my room now.